Hello, it's Laura here with Healthy Places Survive Mental Health Stigma blog. Today I wanted to share a way that you can help facilitate the conversation around anxiety without being unintentionally stigmatizing. In this instance, I don't just mean the general conversation that we can have about anxiety, but rather I'm focusing in on the conversations about anxiety experiences, either after the fact or as they're happening in real time. Having conversations about anxiety episodes can reduce stigma because it helps create a better understanding overall of what it's like to go through that and it can also help the person that is going through an anxiety episode perhaps better understand what they're going through, better process it, or at the very least just feel like they have a voice and that their situation is being heard. That way they don't have to feel like they're suffering in silence with that episode. These conversations, however, can be very difficult to have. And part of that difficulty comes from being able to express what it's like to be in that moment. I know personally speaking, I struggle to explain the thoughts, the feelings, the physical symptoms that come along with anxiety. So even starting that conversation can be very difficult. And then it can be difficult to continue that conversation if the person on the other side isn't sure how to interact with that person. The one thing that I would definitely not want to hear in those conversations, however, is that it's all in my head. For me, this is a conversation stopper. It harkens back to the stigmatized idea that anxiety is just all in your head and you need to get over it. It's not a real thing. But that's not the case at all. We know anxiety is so much more than that. Even if you're not intending for that to be the impression that you're giving, the stigmatized version, I mean, that can be what comes across when you say those kinds of words or phrases like them. So it's best to just avoid them altogether so that you're not unintentionally stigmatizing and stopping the conversation that you're trying to have, potentially even before it starts or just midway through. When you use these kinds of phrases, like I said, it can stop the conversation because the person doesn't feel like they're heard or supported in that moment, so they don't want to continue to try to go forward with it. At the very least, that's how I feel in those kinds of conversations. So rather, it's important to work with the person to find a way to communicate on both ends to have a better conversation around this idea. I recommend that and encourage everyone to share kind of thoughts and ideas and maybe different tactics that you've used to have conversations around anxiety while avoiding stigma so that we can learn from each other and build our own toolboxes so that we can support one another more effectively. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful to someone and I hope you have a great day.